Well, audience, I want to welcome you and introduce you to Jade Alexander. Hi. Jade, would you like to tell us a little about, bit about yourself, about your business, and what you have done? Um, long story short, which and whenever somebody says that, it's never going to be short. Um, <laughs> but what I do is I show other entrepreneurs and just people in general how to look good on camera because the way that our world works, it's now a requirement and an expectation. And it's something that people just base off of your professionalism. If you don't have a nice video, then obviously you're not professional. That's just what people think. So not true, but that's kind of the society we're living in. And most people don't know these techniques and there's small little changes that I can make to help you look awesome. And that's what I'm here for. That's great, Jade. In fact, Anything to help me look better on camera <laughs> would be a blessing in disguise. In fact, I'm taking your first course started on August 10th. And if anybody's interested, we're going to have a link to Jade and she can tell you how to get involved in her course on next starting next week on from Thank you. to pro. Yes. And you are also, and correct me if I'm wrong, videographer for yes. Gary Barnes International. And she yes. holds a black belt, not the same style I am, but a black belt just the same. So I salute her. <laughs> Thank Talk you. <laughs> so I do have a black belt, um, second degree in Taekwondo, Hapkido, and Yudo. So the Korean arts. Mm -hmm. um, I have done basically to the black belt level in certain types of weapons, but I'm not as proficient as I would like to be. Um, that I suppose is how you can look at that. I have been a videographer for over a decade. And yeah, I've basically taken that experience and repackaged it into here's the technicals on how to look good and how to get yourself together. So you start winning more business. That's really how things have evolved into the yes. other. Wonderful. Would you tell the audience, please, your three different courses that you offer and oh. basically entailed in that? Sure. So I have beginner to pro, which is basically if you do any kind of filming, whether it's Zoom or Facebook Lives, or if you're going to events and you want to do the little selfie filming, there are some basic principles that once you know them, you can apply them to anything and you can then have the skills to film your own class. If you're building an e-course or an online course, that it leads into my next one. I kind of teach you how to organize it in a way and film it in a way that's going to keep student retention. A lot of people have these great ideas, but don't know how to really convey them via video. Because a lot of us, we're, including myself, we're teachers in a live audience or a classroom. And you can't really do that right now. Or if you want to reach more students on the global level, online course is the way to go. And then the last course that I teach is intro to editing. It is a crash course. And I do mean a crash course. Editing is the most costly thing in both time and resources as well as money and it's something that a lot of people can learn how to do themselves if they were just pointed in the right direction so I teach you the basics on how to just make it look professional enough until either you have the resources to pay somebody or you can up your own game continue your education and buy better software and products that sounds wonderful let the audience know Jade where you were before you became successful what was your life like? Wow, before I became successful, there was like a lot of stories to that. Um, I guess when I was the most, if you want to call it unsuccessful, the most starved, I was a junior in college and the economic bubble happened where a lot of us remember kind of what that was like. Um, resources were scarce. I was not eating on a regular basis. I was worried about getting kicked out of my apartment. I was just barely making enough money to pay for that and like pulling coins out of the sofa kind of thing, kind of situation. Um, and at the time I was running a little, basically what we call VA now, a little admin business. And I kept seeing my clients hiring out videographers that were doing just a terrible job. And I felt so bad that I would remake their videos for them for free with this little tiny, horrible camera that I had and whatever natural artisticness I had. Um, people often ask me, did I go to school for videography? And I didn't. I actually went to school for marketing and psychology um, and basically studying people. That's what I, people studied. Uh, I think you find a lot of introverts that people study because we want to understand people and watch from behind. So yeah, I was very much a behind the scenes person, but um, 
that struggle is real. And it turned out that I was better at doing video than a lot of the people out there doing it. And I started getting paid for it. And I was making more doing that than I was the standard VA stuff. And that slowly climbed me out of the poverty side of things. And I started making a little bit more money. And with that money, I went and made all the mistakes that every business owner makes. And I was in you know my early twenties when I did all this. Um, and I eventually ran into the right people at the right time in the right places and made bad friends and good friends and finally met Gary. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of how that happened. I don't know if that's the best description of that. Yes, it is. And there's one key point in that whole description that you mentioned that I never took classes to become good or great at videography. Mm -hmm. And people are going to get tired of the story, but I tell it on a lot of my interviews that with corporate world, I used to be a master at statistics. And I know a lot of people, oh man, that, that boring subject, but I made it fun. Anyway, I had one engineer come up to me and ask me for help in his advanced college statistical course. Mm. And he says, can you help me? And I says, I don't know, what's your problem? He just find, defined his problem. I helped him, he got a straight A. Nice. Yeah. The, I cried through statistics in college. I, it was <laughs> the one class that almost failed me. I, mm -hmm. It was the most important D minus I ever got in my entire life because I was an A student, but I begged and cried for that D minus. Oh. every night and I finally passed the class with just enough yep I then had 14 other engineers come up to me and ask me to help them oh really wow so I helped them so what I tell people is I have straight A's in advanced statistics in college but the truth of the matter is if they would have asked me what credentials I had to teach them they would have run because all I had was a high school degree Mm. All I did, I just knew the subject. I knew the right. matter. The mathematics is something I loved, and I don't keep up with it today. So don't ask me to help you with statistics. I can give you the basics, and that's about it. <laughs> so, sounds like you crawled out from under and became successful. You let roadblocks, you passed them by, you walked over them, you blew them up, whatever it took to get to where you are today. Am I accurate in saying that? I, I think there was more heartache and wanting to give up with that. It was people will say like, yeah, I pushed through and I was great the whole time. And I'm like, I wasn't. I mean, if we want to talk math here, I was like 20% of the time gung ho, like I can do this and the other 80, 60, whatever the right number is there, you guys can correct me, um, <laughs> was heartbreak. And I was sad and I was very depressed. But my only other choice was to keep going forward. My only other choice was to survive because that's all I knew how to do. And I mean, that, that is the truth. You're, it's not going to be one of those things of like, I just got inspired one day and I just never looked back. Like I was always looking back. I was always, and I said that I cried and I, I meant that I did. I did cry because it was awful, yeah. but you know, there's, now I'm getting sunlight. This is perfect. You know, even you have to know what is what is the saying, and you have to know what the rain feels like in order to appreciate the sun. Very so true. that's where that was at. But yes, I did survive eventually. Yeah. Andy Andrews once told me a story about how he was walking through the woods with his father, and it was really dry and crisp. And then all the rain came and everything started to loosen up and lighten up. And they didn't like the rain falling on him, but they liked the aftermath of it. So it was a really compelling story and only Andy Andrews can tell an Andy Andrews story. <laughs> so I really enjoyed knowing that person as mm -hmm. well as I enjoyed knowing the friends that I have. One thing I do wanna ask you, and this is a question that was not put in, but it's really critical. Okay. Who's your favorite actor or actress and why? That's a great question. Is that be living or dead? Either one. Okay. I think for myself, Audrey Hepburn was one of my favorites. Classic, classic person because very down to earth, um, had a lot of what I share, a lot of confidence issues, uh, suffered from imposter syndrome, things like that. And she was 
we look at her now and she was an icon and she was beautiful and adorable and talented and all these things, but she never saw herself that way. And she never saw herself as anything special, but towards the end of her life, she was really able to change a lot of lives outside of, you know, the entertainment industry. She did a lot for UNICEF um, and helped others. And she came from a background of a lot of heartbreak and, you know, she, her hometown was basically invaded by the Nazis and she almost starved to death as a child. So, I mean, you see her, you know, in the silver screen that, oh my gosh, look how great, how perfect her life was. And it wasn't, but she did as much good as she could with the time she had. She died fairly young. I mean, I think it was pretty young to die. I think in the fifties, she died in her fifties, mm-hmm. um, very sad. Um, but that would be who I, I like, because I think when you have talent and you have the ability to help others, it's your moral obligation to do it. Even if you don't have a lot, you know, you work with what you have, whatever you give, you know, people will say like, oh, it comes back to you threefold. That's not the reason to do it. Mm-hmm. You do it because it's the right thing to do. And I think that's why I like that actor so much, actress, whatever word you want to use. It doesn't matter. I'm just happy that you like her. And the reason why is very inspiring. And for me, I love to help people out. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I ask people now when I do speak in public is how many people want to make money? You know, first I ask them, how many people want to help other people? Mm -hmm. And then I say, how do you want, yep, that's easy for me to say, how would you like to make money helping a lot of people and eyes light up and what have you so they're not mutually exclusive yeah at all they work hand in hand for sure yeah and there's somebody out there that is crying for the information that you and i possess and we owe it to those people and to the world to make it a better place by letting people know that we do have it so i want to thank you for the interview and I want to ask you tell the audience please where they can locate you and how they can get a hold of you sure so um you can find me pretty much on all social media um at synergy s-y-n-e-r-g-y videography um I'm posting all the time under that or influencing on camera uh that is also my website influencingoncamera.com um, but find me. I mean, this is this is what I look like if you're watching this. Mm-hmm. Um, if you see anybody in a squirrel outfit, that's also me. If mm-hmm. you look at any of our icons um, and, and reach out to me, if I can help you, I will. Or I can direct you to somebody who's a better fit because there's no perfect fit for everybody. There's no perfect shoe, perfect car, you know, shop around. And if I'm your Fiat or whatever you want to make me, then perfect. If you're looking for a Fiat, I guess that works. Oh, well, that sounds great. And if you want to be interviewed, if you happen across this video or any one of my other videos, you're welcome to take a look at them, like them, share it, comment, become a subscriber. And by all means, if you want to be interviewed for free, come to ErnieMeyerLive.com and I will be glad to interview you. I will talk to you first and ask you what it is that you do and how you became successful and what you like to do. So with that, I will say good night, good afternoon, goodbye, whatever your time zone is, and we will see you soon. Thank you, Jay. Thank you.